David Dobrik is the world's most popular vlogger. Never personally watched him or even a fan. However, I know he likes to laugh. <laughs> <laughs> It's almost demonic. <laughs> if you've watched David Dobrik's vlogs, you'll know everything looks like a great time. Life looks perfect with his multi-million dollar mansion, celebrity friends, giving away tons of cars. But what if it wasn't perfect? And that behind the scenes, David Dobrik isn't who he seems to appear on his vlogs. And that he has multiple times now treated his employees and friends like sh**. Well, today we are looking into two former Vlog Squad members, Seth and Big Nick, who have come forward against David Dobrik on H3H3's After Dark podcast and have revealed some extremely interesting information on David Dobrik and the whole operation of the Vlog Squad. Now, Big Nick and Seth went on different times on separate podcasts, so it wasn't planned. They didn't both come forward at the same time. They both tell very different stories, but with striking parallels. And a lot of today's clips are coming from H3H3's After Dark podcast. The links to the full episodes will be linked down below as well. So let's start with Seth and the disgusting prank David Dobrik played on him. Before hearing Seth's side of the story and how this prank made him feel, let me run it down for you. Because I'm pretty sure by anyone's standard, it's pretty f***. But to David Dobrik, it's possibly his greatest prank. So David Dobrik asked Seth for his permission to do a scene where he makes out with Corinna. The twist being, she'll be in a Halloween mask. I'm gonna convince Seth that he needs to make out with Corinna while she's wearing that old man mask. Seth, are you okay with making out with Corinna? Yeah. So he gets his consent to make out with Corinna. Then, without Seth knowing, he switches the person under the mask with creepy, disgusting Jason. I gotta put padding, you look kind of dumb. But instead of going to the room and adding more padding, Corinna is gonna hop out of the outfit and have Jason put it on instead. Everyone's taking this off now and switching with them. And then without any hesitation, I'm gonna have Jason come out wearing the old man mask and try to make out with Seth. And continues then to let Seth make out with Jason when he only ever gave consent for it to be Corinna. Warning, just watching this is vile. <laughs> Actually hard to imagine being Seth and having that happen to you. It's pretty fucked up, especially the fact that after it was done, it was uploaded and watched by over 10 million people. Now Seth on the original video plays it off very well. However, this was all a huge surprise to him. He didn't really have time to process what even just happened to him. On the H3 podcast, he goes on to list how badly this prank had affected his life. I decided to kind of move out the state and, and move to um, Atlanta because when I was in LA, um, after kind of dealing with that video with, with, with Jason, the makeout video, now millions of billions of people kind of are misconstruing like my own sexuality and how I feel about participating in something that, mm. you know, he, that he didn't have my consent for. Um, so I end up moving to a different state to kind of get away from it. So it's not like people coming up to me left and right. The attention this prank brought him affected his life so much. He moved state to try and escape it. And not only that, he goes on to say how badly it affected him mentally too. And I really want the viewers to understand it is, so incredibly tough as a man to have to say that you were sexually assaulted right. by a man. It does like affect your confidence as a man, you know, you start kind of questioning yourself and people would bring it up to me in public and then I would just basically ignore it like, oh, well, you know, at least, you know, like I, I have friends that, you know, are doing cool stuff, you know, like that's probably why they're, they're just trying to, to bring this up to try to like bring me down, but in reality, the situation was so traumatizing that I was just trying to act like it just didn't even exist. Yeah. It is fucked. It is. Imagine you give consent to kiss this person and you think it's a scene you're helping David Dobrik out with a vlog and it turns out he pranks you by making you literally make out with someone who you did not at all consent for. What was the point in asking for permission in the first place 
if you just don't care about his permission or consent. So you're probably thinking, why isn't Seth voice his opinion and ask David politely to take it down? Since it's David's friend, surely if he voiced his opinion on how uncomfortable it made him, he would take it down because friendship. No. David Dobrik allegedly tried to buy his dignity. This is what Seth said when he confronted David about this. I politely asked him, I understand like everyone makes mistakes and you know, I don't feel like you hate me and you know, all this other stuff. But you know, I, I just, I need you to, to take these videos down because they legitimately have caused me so much trauma. I just mm -hmm. want to try to get away from it. And then he, you know, offers to, to, to pay me money to keep the videos up. And then at that moment, I realized like he's not a friend. So even when he told David Dobrik about how badly this video was affecting him, the only response David gave was to pay him off. I fucking hate that. That's such a scummy mentality if that happened to just wave money around. There's some things money can't buy and being humiliated like that isn't something you can put a price to, especially the amount of pain it's causing him. But that's David Dobrik's vlogs, isn't it? Everyone seems to be in on the joke and in on the laugh when in reality, we have people like Seth who really weren't in on it, but played it off because David Dobrik is David Dobrik and he he wanted some friends in LA to hang out with, but I bet he didn't realize the extent to which this would go. And you know what is the most f part? David Dobrik did this a second time, but it gets so much worse. So David Dobrik, and this video is hard to find, convinced Seth that he booked a commercial. Booked a commercial that was going to be paid. He does it again, and he sets it up this time as this commercial where collab is involved. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess Jack Link's beef jerky was, was involved in it. And then also David, Jason, and this time not Corinna. And Seth was under the impression he booked this big commercial and was so happy he was telling his family, his friends, he was very excited by this news. Driving from like my grandma's house in Compton to, to, to be involved in all these videos, kind of, you know, looking for something that could kind of be a break to kind of get me to the next level. And I'm like, oh, shit, I just booked a commercial, like mm -hmm. hanging out with David and all this other stuff. This is awesome. Like, I'm super excited about it. I'm mm -hmm. calling my family like, hey, you know, like I'm about to oh. be in a commercial. Like, That's this is painful. good. Oh. He thought he was getting a big break, but ends up getting kissed by Jason again. In the video, apparently everyone is dressed up in gorilla suits and one of them goes over and starts making out with Seth. Oh yeah, there's going to be like these sexy gorillas and they're going to be touching on you. And even then I was just like, Jack Lynx is kind of mm -hmm. like, like, what's up with them, you know? And so Jason came out as one of the gorillas and then started making out with you again. Yeah. You know what's even worse? Apparently, according to Seth, David Dobrik tried to not pay him for this video in which the brand had already promised him money for that he was planning to use to live and for rent. Seth says that he had to grab David before he left the set to push him and plead him to pay him $2,500. And I literally had to grab him and I was like, bro, like... I can't walk. I legitimate. If I walk out of here and you don't send me that money, I will literally not be able to have a home. So I, I, I have to have you, you know, compensate me for this. That is and so I, shocking. I was okay with it. It was because I was in a devastated position where, you know, I, I, I was, I was in between places to live. Mm -hmm. And so I had to say, you know, like, Bro, I, I, I need something. Which to David Dobrik is absolutely nothing because he needed it for rent for his home. Seriously, like, bro, like, I don't know if I could pay my rent this month because I was Jesus. relying on one situation to basically help me move into a new place, which is literally oh what... Oh, my God. Steph also said that David tried to just tag him in the video as payment, but because he accepted the money, he didn't tag him that high up he was just like oh come on man like you know like i'll tag you in the video and i was like i was like i i need you to, like tag me in the video isn't gonna help me eat tonight he does have tags of other people in this video and seth is like the 20th person down in the list on the <laughs> even though you are literally the subject <laughs> of the video i accepted, I accepted some money he oh. didn't tag he didn't tag me like that in the video. Seth is literally the subject of this video and prank. And because he asked you for the money that he was owed because of his fake brand deal, you tagged him lower? <laughs> What? Do you want to know something else hilarious? The kissing prank. The first kissing prank that got over 10 million views. Seth didn't even get paid for. First video, I was not compensated anything. And then all the other vlogs, 
I wasn't compensated. I am wasn't compensated a dime. When again, he was a subject of a video. He went through that awful time for David Dobrik. So let me get this straight. David Dobrik makes the money off the videos. He gets to prank everyone for his entertainment and gets all the fame. What? Like what? That is insane. I mean, tricking him into kissing another man. And I mean, the way Jason does it too is disgusting. <laughs> That is the definition of sexual assault. Jason assaulted Seth because he was under the impression it was Corinna, a girl. And not only did David Dobrik upload that, he made money off it and didn't even give Seth any of it. And not that that would have made it right either, but it just kind of shows how scummy it really is. People used to argue against Seth and his points saying that in the second video, he apparently gave consent, which Seth says is not true. And people use that argument to invalidate Seth's first experience because they're saying, well, why would you do it again a second time? Well, Seth didn't give consent to David, according to him. Apparently, David sat him down for the second video and kept telling him that he wanted to do the prank again, but Seth never gave his consent. And Seth even goes as far as to say that David apparently cut the clips up to make it seem like he was in on the second video when in reality he didn't consent or say yes david was sitting there and and, and we we're sitting almost for like 20 minutes and he was talking to me about he was like yo i want to do that prank again i kept saying like no no i don't i don't want to have to go through that again i don't want to deal with you know the repercussions of having mm -hmm. all these people know like like that uh, other video people are just starting to forget i just want to keep it moving and not you know be involved in any sort of content like that anymore and then David kind of keeps like, come on, man, like, you know, get, get your consent for this. And what people don't understand in that moment, I never gave him my consent. It is true. David Dobrik has a history of putting people in horrible situations that they don't want to be in for his own entertainment, for his own pocket, for his own fame. When is David ever the butt of a joke? When does David ever have to go through fucked up shit? for his channel. I don't recall many times, if any. We've recently talked about Ellen DeGeneres and her treating her employees badly. David Dobrik is treating his own friend poorly. And it doesn't end there. Another member of the vlog squad, a former member you might remember called Big Nick, he had his own story to tell about David Dobrik. Because David Dobrik would constantly crack jokes about his height, something that he was born with and he can't even control. So where'd you get the elf? The elf? Oh <laughs> no. I don't mean this fucking line anymore. Finally, I can make fun of something that you weren't born with. But you have to get a custom mic to get it that low. <laughs> Alright, so this is the part where I beat your ass. <laughs> Big Nick's rapping on his tippy toes. <laughs> Not everything has to do with dwarves. Like, I just want you to look at me like a normal person. Oh. Like, I'm sorry, dog, but dwarves are not just dispensable for your content. To make them shallow because they have to stay in the shallow end of the pool to talk to you. <laughs> Why don't you shut the f*** up and go find your truck? Jason? Hey. Big Nick's here. Holy sh**. You got the puppet from the Big Nick vlogs? No. Puppet? What do you mean puppet? Dude, it's so fucking lifelike. Is someone working it in the other room? Is it a remote control? No, this is an actual person. Honestly, I don't think he's ever seen a dwarf before. There's a guy in the couch working it. No. Right? Is no. there a guy in there? What the fuck are you doing, dog? Holy shit! Look at it move! How did you get this here? Dude, tell me how it works right now. Is it battery operated? Or is it on strings? And if you watch the clips, yeah, you can see Big Nick laughs at some of the jokes. However, he is allowed because it's about him. It clearly got to a point for Big Nick where these jokes were way too much. People who weren't David kept joking around about him and his height and how severely this affected him mentally. He goes on to start saying that the whole thing is like a cult and a frat house and he describes it as having to escape the vlog squad. It is kind of like a cult, yeah. It's like a high school vibe very cultish like vibe in which he then addresses david dobrik and the disrespect he kept giving towards him and how he didn't respect him just like a normal human and how he should have been respected i did allow it and that's partially my fault um david to like disrespect me in the videos and so then everybody else just got the notion like oh okay like you know we can disrespect big nick too like it's because our master does it you know that was kind of like the whole vibe but just because you're popular doesn't mean you're like a good person you know what i mean which nick says caused him a ton of grief because when he was in public people thought it was acceptable to make fun of him because david's doing it david dobrik's doing it. it's cool now it also got to a point where people would recognize me in public 
And then they would make jokes like about me. And I'm like, dude, like, I don't know you. This is weird, you know? So like what was, kind of jokes? Like Just like mean? making fun of my height and stuff. Oh. And I, just because David did it. And you know what's funny about this is Big Nick was bigger than David Dobrik for a long time on Vine and collabed with David when he was bigger than him and treated David with respect and treated him as a creator. But when David got bigger than him, he starts trashing him over something he can't control. I'm coming from a perspective like <laughs> I collaborated with you when I was, you know, essentially bigger online and like, this is how I get treated. Like, <clears throat> you're like trashing me over something I can't control. Big Nick said when he did eventually confront David Dobrik and tell him that he didn't like these jokes, that because David can no longer make fun of him, he was no good for the vlogs. I basically <clears throat> told him like, dude, I don't want to make these jokes anymore. Hmm. And he was just like, okay, like that's fine. Like he was chill about it, whatever. And I knew by saying that I wasn't going to be in the content anymore. You said, yo, I just, I don't want you to make fun of my height anymore. And he's like, okay, well, there's no point of having you in the vlogs then. That was kind of the, that doesn't seem very that, got, that doesn't sound like, very he good never to me. vocally said that you know what i mean but that was for sure the vibe david dobrik the ringleader is responsible for setting that environment in a workplace because vlogs and youtube is still work it's a huge business for david he set that environment from the get-go and it allowed all his friends and other people who didn't even know nick like that to make fun of him for something he can't even control he goes on to say how worthless this made him feel and even suicidal. I, I can feel her on the whole, like, you know, feeling suicidal part. I mean, for a long time, like, I felt like worthless being in those videos. Like, I was like, dude, why am I even, like, here? Like, what's the point of my existence? Because I was just treated like this, uh, like this uh, punching bag. I was like, wow, I'm, like, really depressed. Like, I realized right then and there, like, followers, fame, money none of this stuff is worth it if i'm getting to the point where like i don't even want to live and nick goes on to say something very similar to seth in fact that he used nick and his situation for content but barely helped him to actually progress definitely use my situation for <clears throat> content and then um didn't really like um i don't know how to explain this didn't really like uh like help me progress at all i don't expect help from anybody but he didn't like help me progress in the way that other people could it seems like from these stories that david doesn't really care about the people around him doesn't really care about the people who help him out and will easily discard them if they don't do what he wants them to do nick goes on to say how glad he is that he's free describing it like he escaped from prison I'm just really <laughs> glad that that I'm out of there and I feel like free almost. Like I feel like I've escaped from prison in a way. And I can't imagine that when everyone else in a group is a big popular group. And one of the reasons you ask, why didn't these people leave earlier? It's the most popular group on the internet. It's a huge opportunity. People get clouded by success. People are clouded by David's success. Just because they stuck around doesn't invalidate their arguments or how they felt because of the environment David Dobrik laid out in the vlog squad. And like Nick says here, all he wanted was a bit of respect and to be treated normally. That's all I just wanted to hear is like, dude, you deserve respect just like everyone else. And yeah. it's like, the fact that I couldn't <laughs> even like get that respect. It's like, dude, what is the point of all of this? You know, like David Dobrik couldn't even do that. This whole vibe and we both these stories, it just feels like bullying, picking on vulnerable people because you know you can. Not only do you get to pick on them, you get fame and money out of it on their expense. I've never had a good vibe about David Dobrik. I've never really thought of him as a great guy. He gives me Ellen vibes. He gives me them talk show vibes where they just present a nice version of the camera. The laughing seems all fake and phony. Nick even confirmed it that they sometimes reshoot laughing scenes they actually all do it in synchronized harmony it's like almost they're all they all have like a cue <laughs> oh like my God. oh yeah let's laugh at this like there's act i sometimes laughs will be um like redone and you know you can That's detach crazy. the audio and, and put that under the clip i hope more people see this and i hope more people take into account how these two people felt from the vlog squad i mean there's other stories as well from trisha paters big nick and people like seth are just giving their honest accounts and it is important to listen to them like i say this is their version of things yeah and where's the conversation even behind the scenes right you know? right man you know like we know we kind of did this we know this is wrong um, you know, like we just, you know, want to apologize for, you know, putting you in this position, X, Y, and Z. So that but, never happened? There was never a conversation like that afterwards? No. Hmm. 
never a text, call, email, an assistant reaching out. Like Not even surprised that he didn't apologize. And to Seth, who he organized Jason to sexually assault him. Good guy, David, though. Won't apologize. Won't even pay him. But he made bank and he's got a lot of fame from it. So he doesn't mind. It's awful. I'm interested to see now if any other vlog squad members come out. I don't know how many other people have left besides Seth and Nick. Probably not many. That is why I say, even though these guys did stuck around, they have left. And they did eventually get out, which is more than other people are riding David's coattails can say. When Trisha Paytas confronted David Dobrik about her being mad about the Seth makeout video, because rightfully so, it's messed up. David Dobrik proceeds to tell her how crazy she is about being mad. She was upset that I was going to make out with Seth. And so I flipped out. You, you being mad about the Seth. Well, that's not true. I was here. Being mad about the Seth makeout thing is crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy. I said to you specifically, don't have a makeout with guys, girls, moms. I don't care. Like, oh, I don't know. What if you were in a movie and you had to do that? It's not a movie. It's David's vlog. How is she crazy? For once, I agree with Trisha Paytas here. No, it's not right. It shouldn't have happened at all. There are plenty of other pranks to do other than making a guy kiss another guy against his consent, pricking him, it was Corinna. I hope more people see this video. The H3 podcasts are linked down below. Go watch the whole thing. There's plenty more things that I haven't even covered. I just want to make this more concise, documented video for you guys. Like the video if you agree. Like the video if you think what David Dobrik did was disgusting, the way he treated Nick and Seth. Comment down below your opinions. What did you think of the kissing prank? And yeah, man, that is it for today's video. My socials are all down below. Follow my Instagram, follow my Twitter, everything to keep up to date with all my stuff. And yeah, thank you for watching. Until next time, fuck off.